Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Nerds of Legend. Uh, my name is Brian Ballard. With me, as always, is Ben and David. And today we have another episode of Talk Nerdy to us. Uh, today is a little bit more of a free-form discussion. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Ben, David, how you feel? Yes. Feeling pretty good this week. Uh, just All want right. to say, uh, Joel uh, wishes everyone well. He's not feeling well today. And uh, he just... Uh, he needed to rest to, to this week, so it's just going to be the three of us. And we wish him a speedy recovery as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you guys are uh, watching us on stream right now, uh, please don't forget to follow us. And uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out a lot, and we could really use the support. Uh, with that, I'd like to actually jump into kind of our first topic uh, this week. And uh, behind the scenes, you know, with Nerds of Legend, uh, we all have, like, a lot of different interests as far as, like, not just, you know, RPGs, but, like, also card games, other nerdy things like that. And we've been kind of, like, uh, spitballing ideas about what we want to do as far as more content for you guys. And one of the ideas that came up was Vampire the Masquerade. We've all tried it once before, and, well... It wasn't exactly the favorite game for a number of our uh, players. There is a, a number of uh, and then uh, an amount of interest, I should guess you could say, uh, within the world of darkness. So we've been going back and forth about what exactly we wanted to do as far as vampires are concerned. Now, uh, Ben doesn't really know that much about vampire. Can't say I blame him. Uh, David, you used to do vampire, vampire though, right? It's not vampire. I, I played a little bit, but that was, oh man, a little more than 15 years ago was probably the last time I played. It was a, a hot minute. But I have played. I have oh. played. There we go. Uh, so I guess really the first kind of like topic I wanted to uh, kind of get rolling on is um, more or less uh if we decide that we wanted to do a vampire game uh i would obviously be running it since i've got the most experience but i wanted to get your guys's opinion about like how you guys would want a vampire game to proceed because i feel as a, a game master whether you're doing this for D D or vampire or anything else it's always important to get your players side of things so that you know what kind of expectations you have going forward. What kind of game would you like it to be? Where would you like it to ultimately end up? Like, what kind of themes would you like to explore? That sort of thing. So, David, let's start with you. When it comes to Vampire, you um, honestly know that, like, or rather, you might know that uh, Vampire is a little bit more personal horror, and therefore it's uh, very character-driven but that doesn't mean that we have to like necessarily go that route. Likewise, Vampire the Masquerade is usually all about like humanity and like the struggle to kind of like come to terms with what you are, but also stay who you were in some semblance. Generally speaking, that's the gist of it, but that also doesn't have to be the focus. So in your mind, David, what would you really like to do with a possible vampire game in the future? Would you want it to be more linear? Would you want it to be more comedic, serious? What would you like to do going forward if we decide to go vampire? Hmm. I don't know. I, th I think initially, maybe have it somewhat linear and then open up as we as a group get familiar with it and feel out the game. I mean, it's like we all have tons of Dungeons and Dragons experience. So it's like we kind of know where the general guide rails are, where things make sense. But uh, with all of us being either little experience or no experience with the game, I think linear would probably be a great way to start it off. Um, and then maybe expand from there. But I've seen... I mean, I, I tried playing with, like, a huge group at first. I mean, it probably like 10 people. I don't know. It was a lot, a lot of people. And there were some characters that had that, you know, 
you know, fight for that or an internal struggle rather, where it's like, all right, it's my humanity versus my monster side. How do I reconcile these differences and other people that were just like, I eat people. Let's, let's go do this. Um, I do think these kinds of games might need more comic relief to them. I think it's really easy to get like overly serious mm -hmm. in vampire. So yeah, I think that would be welcome since you brought it up and be like, yeah, let's have some vampire shenanigans might be a, a fun change. Okay. Uh, ben, I, I know that you're not super familiar with uh, Vampire the Masquerade. So, uh, you know, in a general sense, what, what kind of vampire game would you like to play? Uh, if you can, like, you can also use, like, different uh, types of media to kind of, like, for example, would you want to go interview with the vampire where it's that very, like, Anne Rice kind of, like, pretty boy vampire sort of thing? Or would you want to be more like, uh, like Blade, where it's just high action and you're just, like, chopping guys in half left and right? Like, you know, in terms of vampire medium, like, where do you see this game going? So, Blade's fun. I, I like Blade, but I know v vampire doesn't technically doesn't typically always go in that direction because obviously you have to keep up the masquerade but um it can go in that direction uh, <laughs> but what would you really like to do more about the intrigue and stuff but uh my favorite piece of vampire media right now is probably what we do in the shadows because it's hilarious and also pokes fun at vampires <laughs> uh but uh so i I mean, any one of the, those characters I could see myself from that show, I would could see myself playing. They're just they're just pretty fun, you know. You bit out of touch, you know. They've got but they've got their own like things going on. Uh, Count I don't know if anyone watched the show, but Colin Robinson was a whole lot of fun. Just an energy vampire that's just like is a boring office drone that. Feeds off of people by being exceptionally boring and or frustrating. Yeah, I could uh, definitely see something like that going on. Uh, of course, there's a very fine line to walk there between like what we do in the shadows and like vampire sucks. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to go oh, yeah, too yeah. because like, you know, well, I think, one I of think them is just like about vampire. I, I, that's what I think is great about what we do in the shadows is because it's like it's satirical but it's like uh it's really like not like saying ugh vampires suck it's going hey this is this like huge cultural phenomenon here are some of the like the dumb things about it but like overall it's it's great you know it's it, it's fun it's stuff. less about the characters being funny and more like the characters and their situations is are funny because it's like Oh, we get that. You know, it's more about like yeah. the comedy that arises from e these very serious characters. Yeah, because there's a, there's a character mm -hmm. that's basically like he's a stand-in for Vlad the Impaler. Basically, he's like he's an Ottoman. He's like a guy from the 1500s that fought against the Turks in some fictional country. Like he was like the leader of that country, and it's just completely out of touch with reality because. You know, now it's 2020 and no, like computers are weird and you can't solve things by shoving swords into people anymore. Like, <laughs> generally speaking, that's frowned upon. <laughs> yeah. Like, so he's like, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, th I think it's, I think it's fun because, you know, it, it messes around with some of those like concepts from, uh vampire but like from like vampire lore without like you know it, it it's poking fun at it it's not just like being like ugh, this is so dumb you know yeah it, like it doesn't right. go all the way into like uh scary movie territory you know no right on right I, on i like that they kind of used that in what we do in the shadows the core group seems to be like more bumbling and inept at modern life than even their other counterparts that may or may not be older. Like you get a really broad spectrum of 
how well adapted they are to their current surroundings, even in different age groups. Like there's super old vampires that are like, yep, we're really successful in this world. And there's super old vampires that have no idea what's going on. <laughs> it's just, it, you get everything we between must, like we must controlling the world to populace. the sire. <laughs> There's all sorts of really good uh, stuff to, you know, kind of like take from, you know, different types of vampire media uh, and media in general. Actually, I find that like whenever I'm running a game, what I like to do is I like to kind of consume certain types of media to help like build up my not just my enthusiasm for the game, but like also kind of like put me in the right frame of mind sort of thing. Uh, for example, when I ran Curse of Strahd. I, uh, I I was con starting to consume more and more vampire media because one of the things I, I really wrestled with was like, okay, how do I play straw? You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no set way to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, everyone is obviously going to do it a little bit differently. Uh, but I was like, okay, well, do I have him like Gary Oldman from like Bram Stoker's Dracula? Do I have him like Liam Neeson from like, you know, a Mel Brooks comedy sort of thing? Like, wh where am I going to like, you know? Is he Bella Lugosi? Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, do I go traditional with it, or do I go Count Chocula? You know what I'm saying? Like, where is the line? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I, and I then feel you like realize media is a, all of them. <laughs> I feel like media is a very important uh, cultural touch point, touchstone, if you will, uh, for a lot of you know players and GMs out there. Uh, Tell me, David, when you're trying to get into the mindset base of a character, what do you like to do? Do you have like a, a maybe a pregame ritual sort of thing that you like to do? Or do you just get drunk and turn on the camera and like, okay, we're on? Oh, I don't I don't know if I could do it drunk. Uh <laughs> I wouldn't have an A drink. I think that's what I go through normally through a session, is I'll I'll have one drink, it'll last me through the whole thing, and it gets me just loose enough that it's nice without being uh, talk good, no talk bad do, which I definitely get prone to. Yeah, no, we all have our don't want to do that. Um, yeah, I think like pregame, each game, not a lot, and character creation, I definitely do a lot of like pacing and looking out windows. I feel like I'm that meme from Narcos where it's just yeah. You, you standing always, like, put... looking at empty things like that's kind of where i am you always I'm are you that meme it's where it's crazy. like uh your wife is there and she's like looking at you kind of disgusted like and it's like i bet he's thinking about like a different woman and like it's you're over there and it's like oh man i can't want to really like wait to think about like this new character i'm making and whatnot <laughs> right like do i do this do i make it serious like what, what, what right and then it's like i don't know i start having ideas and then they tangentialize yeah. and build off of each other i'm like Going with that, that sounds now fun. We have a gnome riding turkey, yeah. <laughs> and now we have a yeah barbarian gnome riding turkey, which might be the most outlandish thing I've done so far. Pretty sure, pretty sure that might be in any game wise, space. Yes, yes, I would it's say. outlandish. Yeah, it's, it's fun. But yeah, that's how yourself, things like uh, Is there any like particular way that you help to like? build your mind frame for like either playing a character or maybe thinking about a character like what's your what's your your plan what's your um i think your, in your terms of like uh playing a character i don't do a whole lot of prep uh i'm generally pretty good at i don't do a whole lot of characters that i feel like are in crazy conflict with who I am as a person, you know? Uh, I mean, they might be, like, exaggerations of some facet, but, like, uh, overall, like, I can kind of slip into those pretty easily. It's not, like, something that I have to, like, psych myself up for or anything. Uh, definitely uh, getting a little bit of a buzz on helps uh, with certain characters more than others, but... Um... Just taking a drink. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd say... Um, in terms of that with like playing um yeah i i don't have to do a whole lot of prep work you know i i generally like to get on um at least when we do games i like to get on the 
Discord call like half an hour early so that like make sure you know my my tape my desk's all set up make sure the camera's working all that stuff and I think that kind of like helps me get into the mode of okay it's streaming it's a uh, gaming time um you know I look at my character sheet kind of review my spells make sure I kind of remember where things are at look at any notes but that's about the extent of the prep that I do um I will say I feel like uh there's sometimes I do really good in terms of like actual character creation and then other times um where I just get an idea, like a concept idea of a character. Like, uh, I just want to play this, like X. Um, and sometimes it works. Sometimes I end up like hating the character after a little bit because I like didn't think anything beyond like this sort of like one personality trait. So like uh, there is a character I played a few sessions ago that uh he's a sort he's a wild magic sorcerer who was a satyr that um was literally basically i decided i was going to play him like uh, well basically i had an idea of him the, being this like kind of posh kind of like timid dude and then like noble type and then another character in our group like came in and it was basically the exact same like basically the exact same voice exact same personality and after that session i was like this is not going to work <laughs> so i retconned and then i remembered i was a satyr and then i was like well i was like you know who else is a satyr and then i basically for the rest of the time basically was danny devito so it was like phil from hercules but also like the worst parts of the guy from I Always Sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> so he's like, I started blasting. He's like, uh, yeah. Anyway, we we're, we're just gonna do this thing and uh, do it. And he was just like super lewd, and it was funny for like two sessions. And then after that, I was like, I hate this guy. You know, Dick. Uh, basically, we like came up with a joke that like all of his magic was cast through his magic cod piece. That was his spell focus. And it was funny for like two sessions. And I was like, there's only so many ways you can spell uh, like flavor spells that are like cast from your dick. <laughs> you know, like, oh, I thrust at this guy or, <laughs> you know, you mean. his favorite, his favorite magic sp- missile so his, many times. His he- favorite spell was uh, was chill touch where then he would molest the random bad guys that we encountered. But. It was like it was great at first, and then after some a while, it was just like I don't like this. It's become so one dimensional. Um, now I've kind of like uh, I put a little bit more thought in, and I really wish that I would. A lot of times in character creation, really delve into backstory, but a lot of times it's hard with trying to make sure you mesh in with the rest of the party and. Joel kind of tends to like throw us into a situation like without giving us a whole lot of background about what we're getting into. <laughs> so <laughs> he does occasionally do that. Yes. So I'm like, Oh, I guess I'm just this character and I'll just figure it out. <laughs> I don't know what anything, ex- anything about this character from before, from one minute before I walked into the tavern. I don't think anyone in our uh, current group actually saw us like, planes hopping at the very like beginning of like you know nerds of legend you know what i'm saying like i i I don't think any of us really had that kind of like ambition like going into it and yet here we are i just i just had a gnome that really liked time and really wanted to learn everything he could about time and then joel like worked a masterpiece out of it so (laughs) so now it's into the gnomeverse yeah Right? I mean, it's, it's yeah, it's interesting. We're entering the multiverse of madness. <laughs> well, uh, speaking of various, you know, things regarding, like, uh, your character and such, um, or rather, uh, I should say, uh, regarding, like, upcoming projects where you guys might be making new characters and such, 
Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that I wrestle with an awful lot, and I, I wonder if you guys can kind of identify with this, is uh, one of my big like gaming sins is that I have so much material and I just get this itch from time to time to like jump from like one thing to another because again i have like so much back here where like Mm -hmm. i'll look at my bookshelf because i'm like picking out like a book that i need for you know uh my druid or something like that and i'll be like oh that's right i do have that book man i really gotta like find a group to like run that with um when you're kind of like going through uh whether you got your bookshelf or like a digital bookshelf or maybe you're just at a store or something you guys ever get that uh thing where like you see something brand new and like you say to yourself like oh man that makes me really want to like not do what i'm doing right now but instead jump to either this different character that i have in mind or maybe like jump systems entirely and be like, oh well, I mean, fuck D and D for or fuck vampire. We're gonna go to Call of Cthulhu. Mm-hmm. You guys ever yeah. get like that? I guess you could say RPG wonderlust. I uh, I definitely get that basically every time a new module comes out for Five E. <laughs> I like I I like buy the module and I literally start reading it like a book. Um. Uh, and sometimes I like get further into it. I was like, actually, that's not that great. Like I, I read like uh, I started trying to do Icewind Dale, and it was like, yeah, <laughs> big, uh, big Alex says all the time. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, we talk about it a lot, <laughs> but um, I, I think it's like every time I like see a new module or I see a new system, a lot of times I'm, I'm very like, Oh, I want it now. I want to do something else, but you know, a certain, to a certain extent, you know, there's only so many hours in a week to play D and D. So you know, it's true. You don't want to run into burnout. That is by far the worst thing yeah. where it's like, you know, you, you get like all these different ideas. You mm-hmm. try to like do something like, you know, you, you try to keep up with, uh, all the ideas going around in your head and then like you're just end up blowing yourself out and it's like oh yeah. now i don't even really want what how wow really do i don't want to play rpgs that's a new feeling for me. and then you're like you know, what's wrong with me <laughs> yeah yeah i i don't get a, that a whole lot as a player but i definitely uh when i dm'd before experienced that you know like it kind of takes me oh uh thanks for the follow doubt uh we'll uh hopefully see you around um, thank you very much uh, so uh how about you david what, you ever get like the the wanderlust you ever get like the the ants in your pants and you're like man i really got to make that new character um character building i don't get so jazzed on mm-hmm. but just about every time i see another game i'm like <laughs> i want to try that I, every time i go in the game store um see random things be like oh wow that totally reminds me of some shadow run artwork that's another game i want to play i'm like i'm just not even looking at games not thinking about games and it's just like there it goes the urge just kicks me in the dick i'm like now i'm thinking about playing a game system i gotta buy a bunch of stuff yeah uh, david i don't let's go <laughs> that uh you uh out of any of us do not like building characters a whole lot i know i'll like, I think that's, you put a lot more thought into, like, background and personality and stuff, whereas I'm just like, I want to make a thi- a guy that does this thing. <laughs> right? I, I get, like, overthinky when I'm making characters. Where I'm like, all right, what if the DM asked me these questions? And then I'm going to have to make it up on the spot. Nope, can't do that. So I make some weird backstory up and sometimes i run with it but usually That's it's way more detailed than ever gets used and guys that might be slightly insane <laughs> it's kind of why i like uh the non-linear systems when it comes to like call of cthulhu or uh vampire or even mm-hmm. like uh what's another good one um or uh conan for example mm-hmm. uh 
lot of those have like non-linear systems when it comes to like building your character up which mm -hmm. also usually leads to you being able to like spread yourself out a little bit more than yeah. you normally would because like in D and D you're very married to like the class that you have you know yeah. you can mm -hmm. multi-class but like if you do that you know to yourself like i'll never be as good as like like if you're a cleric who's also uh, a fighter you're never gonna be the kind of fighter who you would be if you had just been a straight fighter. But likewise, you're never going to be the kind of cleric you would be if you were just straight cleric. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, everything is, like, kind of compromised. You know, if you want to spread yourself out, you got to kind of, like, be mediocre at, like, a lot of different things rather than, like, actually good. Right. Or just bank on really good roles all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's one of the things I really like about, like, systems like Call of Cthulhu or Vampire or whatnot. Uh, so when you guys are like kind of like thinking about different things you want to do, whether that's D and D or Call of Cthulhu, uh, what's your guys' like preference? Do you guys like more of a, a level based system, or are you guys kind of in the same camp with me, where like you prefer more of like a skill based system, where it's a, a little bit more non linear? Oh, I think. Uh... And there's like merits to both sides uh like uh i think there's like there's nothing like uh finishing up a like encounter in five in D D and the dm finishing up like all right since you just killed that guy and they wrapped up this sort of story point uh uh you know uh see you next week you're uh, gonna be level six you know you're like Yes, because <laughs> you know you it get, does like, feel really good, and like, I will Ugh. say that class-based leveling is way faster and easier. Yeah, so you get this like all of a sudden you're just like, poof, like a big like you know certain levels you hit in D and D all of a sudden like, you know, you know four and five level four and five is the difference between fi uh, wizard having fireball and not having fireball. Like, <laughs> yeah, you just sudden, get that endorphin rust where it's like, like, oh man, awesome! Yeah. You can finally like actually do yeah. mass devastation right right uh you know i, th I think it happens um, another point there's definitely other points where that happens as well um but it's like you're like oh you hit that you hit that third level and all of a sudden your your, your paladin now has his oath so now all of a sudden you can actually do shit or like uh you know your barbarian your fighter get their second or even third attack you know there's so much fun stuff that happens at different levels but uh, there's a lot of fun to that, but I also think um, my other big game that I played that was like more skill based leveling was Call of Cthulhu. So it's, you know, like I think the fun thing with that is, correct me if I'm wrong, Brian, but uh, if you fail a roll during a session, right, that gives you a chance to, after session, uh, roll to improve that skill. Right? Is that how that works, or is it the other way? Around? Actually, uh, what you do is you roll, and if you succeed, you go ahead and you check off that skill. But then, oh, right. on the improvement roll, you want to fail. Right. That right. way, the scale. Yeah. The, I'm sorry. The skills that have the most to go, yeah. like for example, if you have something at five percent, yeah, you're more likely to fail that roll when you try to like improve it, which then gives you the improvement. So that, like, if you've got a skill that's, like, at 90%, you're probably not going to fail that roll so it doesn't go up, like, outrageously fast. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's interesting because yeah. it in actually incentivizes you to do things that your character might not actually be good at. You know, like, you, you have an incentive to, like, try and, like, do... You know, a lot of times D&D, &D, you're like, oh, that's... Uh, uh, I'm the I'm the fighter. I'm not gonna try and perform. That's the bard's job. You know, I'm not gonna try and or like I'm the wizard. I don't have any charisma. I can't you know, I can't persuade that guy to do things. But you know, it's like, D but uh, like with the Call of Cthulhu, it's like oh, fixing a car. Yeah, yeah. I can totally do. That. I've got like five percent. Yeah, Call of Cthulhu. The barbarian can attempt to persuade that lovely lady. That you know it. Uh, I mean, it might not, it probably won't go well, but, like, there's a chance it might, you know. Uh, there's always that chance, yeah. Where it's, like, if you're, like, you have that, you know, 
it's I think that's that's a lot of fun with those skill based leveling systems. Um, so it encourages right. that additional level of role play, which is fun. Um, I just the the my one setback with it is like you don't get that like oh yeah level five now I get all this new shit like it's just like a very like much slower progression you know it de it, de it definitely develops your character and the story better but uh, from like a mechanics perspective it can be it can be discouraging because like maybe you had a really bad session and now like you don't get to level up jack you know yeah and plus there's no like necessarily looking forward to some big thing i mean like for example with vampire you can plan out like what you want to spend your experience on so that you can kind of look forward to like oh man can't wait to like finish up this session because i'm gonna have just enough experience to buy that really cool vampire power uh, that i've been wanting for a while so i mean like obviously with different systems are a little bit different than different systems uh, but yeah, with Call of Cthulhu, you're absolutely right. There's no necessarily like, oh man, I'm about to hit whatever experience point, you know, sort of thing. I'm finally going to get like a machine gun. No, it doesn't work. Like that. No, you have to convince the DM that you found a machine gun, <laughs> <laughs> which I mean, I, I think, like I said, there's, there's merits to both. Like, like yeah, you can you you won't be able to necessarily be good at the machine gun, but if you roll high enough, you might be able to find one still, you know. It's true. Or sorry, low enough. Uh, <laughs> so. Well, yeah, I mean, you gotta succeed at the skill in the first thing, and yeah, then like right. on the improvement, you gotta fail. But yeah, you, I get what I'm saying. David, how about you? Like, uh, where do you see yourself falling on this one? Hmm. I guess it depends on how much actual thinking I want to do um, with the kind of gameplay. If I want to have a lot of like critical thinking and like trying to figure out new and creative ways to do things, probably going to lean towards a system more like, you know, Delta Green, Call of Cthulhu. Because it, it, like he was saying, it encourages not only like new skill use, but like varied skill use. Like the more skills that you use throughout a session, the more chances you're going to have to make your person better at things. So it's not so in those kinds of games, you're not getting into the all right, I'm a fighter in D and D. What do you do? Pick weapon spam. And you become like Kung Fu Grip G.I. Joe from the eighties. <laughs> it's where you just this is what you got. Um so I do Why like that about that. more complicated than that, David? Come on. They don't, don't have to be, though. Well. Yeah, they don't have to be. I mean, like, you could make them as complicated as you wanted to be, kitted out with gear and tactics and, you know, your paths and things like that. There's always some variation there, but it's not like... At the end of the day, Wolverine is still using his goddamn open world. Claws, you know what I'm saying? Like, Yeah, yeah like, there's only <laughs> so many, like, oh, cool, he hit healed himself from a nuclear blast but then yeah. somehow the punisher kills him with power lines and i don't yeah marvel <laughs> it's all the things all the time super positional comic story um <clears throat> so yeah it just de depends what i'm feeling like if i want to do sleuthy creative stuff and i'm feeling those juices i'm lean more towards a call of cthulhu like you know, turn to hobo into a master hypnotist i mean it's get away with really fun stuff like that in D, &D or games with more linear level styles like you you might get that if you roll really lucky like sure you might get that eight intelligence in barbarian i turned a bodyguard into van helsing <laughs> <laughs> yeah mm. constantine. <coughs> constantine i guess more than yeah, just, uh, well, just I know we started a little bit later than uh, we normally do, but we're going to go ahead and take our uh, break now. Uh, when we come back, we're going to have more uh, talking nerdy to us. So uh, come right back.
All right, and we're back. Welcome back to uh, Nerds Legend. Uh, we're in uh, talking nerdy to us. Uh, if you want to be part of the action at home, uh, you can actually send us mail at uh, nol talk nerdy uh, at gmail dot com. Uh, you can send us topics that you'd like us to talk about. You can give us your feedback on some of the topics we're talking about, or just anything in general. Um, moving forward, Ben, you like dice, right? I mean, wh where would you say it would be like your favorite place to get dice? I mean, somewhere that's easy to buy dice from. I don't know. It's a... Uh... There's a place I know. I always go to them. I can't quite think of the name. Oh yeah, tabletop loot. Tabletop loot. Yes. What's what, what's their deal? Like, so are I mean, they some sort of like, I don't know, like dice subscription yeah. service so or got, something like that? So they've got all kinds of dice and dice accessories as well as uh, the cool thing that right, but Brian and I both use. Uh, is uh, we have they have a dice subscription service, uh, which is for uh, remind me of the price, Brian. It's not too bad at all, but uh, I mean, uh, I think it's just twenty five dollars a month that yeah. gets you at minimum four sets of dice delivered to your door yeah. every month. It definitely helps stave off the dice addiction that is the goblin that is chewing away at my soul. Uh, it keeps keeps him at bay, keeps him happy and grumbling just at at the corners of my periphery until the next month when I start getting the itch again. But, uh, so that's pretty awesome. But, uh, if you're, you want to look at tabletop loot, uh, just go over there and, uh, uh, use the code, uh, NOL 15 and, uh, to get 15% off your purchase. Unfortunately, it doesn't work for the subscription service, but, uh, it will work with everything else on the site. And, uh, Alex, Thankfully, uh, put it up in the chat for us there. So if anyone wants to use the code, go see and go to check out Tabletop Loot. That sounds fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. David, do you have Tabletop Loot? You're muted. And I'm muted. Still I'm, not cool enough for I'm, Tabletop <laughs> Loot. I muted him because I knew he wasn't cool enough. Oh, true. He did a force mute That'll on show me. you. <laughs> okay, well, moving on to uh, a slightly different topic. As much as I could literally talk about dice all fucking night, um, I actually want to talk about something that recently happened to me. And I don't know, like, I, I wanted to talk about it for a while. But it's something that I've noticed, and I kind of want to get your guys' opinion on it as well. Um, to uh, kind of illustrate my point, let me rock on back here real fast. All right. Uh, so, Alex suggested that we uh, should uh, have an entire topic be about dice at some point because we're all... oh that's that's easily done yeah uh, although I think that we'll be excluding David a little bit yeah uh, David we have to we I have still to... have hopes and dreams yeah we have and to he still has we have to turn as well so I mean that... we have to get David to become a dice goblin before we uh, a fellow dice goblin before uh, or dragon hoarder uh, <laughs> before. Uh... Mm -hmm before we can have I just, that topic I just, my secret ambition I is just, to get the human bone dice i, just, I cover oh, those, those i nice. need them i just really like my clickety clack rocks actually uh you know what as long as we're fucking talking about it right now uh one day David, i will I gotta have show you some dice, dice that i got not that long ago actually uh you're, you're gonna love them because they're not made from human bone but it's unfortunate but still there's a lot of room for coolness there. Meet me at Dice Camera 2. All right. Oh. Check it out. Oh. Yes. Oh. Gold That's camera. pretty dope. They are dice that are made to look 
you, bitch. Focus. It doesn't want to cooperate. Looks like ossified. What they call that, where it's like bone growth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but they're all like tiny skulls. Actually, I could probably get it Whoa. to show up a little bit better on uh, the D6 here. Okay, so check this shit. Oh, is every one of those nubs a skull? Yes. Yes. Oh my. Yes. Wow. Well, uh, I don't know how you haven't killed Edward off and like made a necromancer yet. Blood oh man! For like, the blood every time I look at these, I just go like for the skull dice. <laughs> like I need to be a necromancer. Why am I not a necromancer right now? <laughs> that is oh, I actually can kind of see it with that now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you Little just had charnel it the dice. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, That's they're fucking rad. rad. There's some dice company I was looking at that was uh they have like uh carved wood dice and it seemed like it would be pretty rad, but I was like, I feel like they wouldn't roll fair, but Yeah, it might. But yeah, those are uh so pretty cool. Mm. Dice Macabre with Q Workshop. I think you remember you mentioning those. Yeah, I got them on a Kickstarter not that long ago. Uh, right. These Doesn't particular ones some are like they're place. hyper detailed with like the metal digits and whatnot. Really good stuff. Uh, speaking of uh, quality, though, uh, what I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about was a recent purchase I got. Um, okay. As a lot of people know I'm very into uh, vampire, mm-hmm. primarily because my wife got super into vampire, and because I enjoy spending time with her and actually playing games and whatnot. You know, vampire just kind of became her preferred system, so I got really deep into it. And recently, the license for vampire has changed hands from Modifius uh, Publishing to Renegade Games, and. Uh, they re-released uh, the core rule book as well as, you know, a number of other books. And uh, they made updates, you know, here and there, like uh, rather than, you know, just releasing the core rule book uh, as it was, they went ahead and they reprinted the core rule book with all the errata included inside of it. Mm. So that was, you know, a good thing that they did. And one of the things that they uh, printed as part of their update was there was a a change made to, like, your blood potency. Now, of course, these terms don't necessarily mean a whole lot to you guys because you aren't into vampire at the moment. But basically, the higher your blood potency, the more you have certain powers connected with you. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you've got a really high blood potency, you can uh, heal your wounds faster than, like, someone who's, you know, got weak blood. Isn't that related to your thirst as well, though? I yeah, yeah. Know. Like, uh, if you've got a really high blood potency, then it's really difficult for you to get below a certain amount of, like, hunger. You know what okay. I'm saying? Like, you're always at, like, you know, a, a high hunger level because, you know, it takes a lot more to, like, quench your thirst. You know what I'm saying? If you have a really like, you high might blood have, potency, like, you're always going to be, like, 3 a.m., uh, exactly yeah like you're just going to be walking around hangry the entire time uh, so the reason why I, I bring all that up uh, is because recently one of the purchases that I made well actually I pre-ordered this purchase uh, last year and it finally came to me and it's the new storyteller screen for Vampire the Masquerade Oh. I like that. You know, it's got some good artwork to it. And I've always said that Renegade Games always delivers in terms of quality. Uh, I haven't always agreed with everything that they've done, but I've always said that, like, when it comes to quality, Renegade Games is pretty good. Um, But the thing is that this particular storyteller screen really let me down. What is that? And the thing that. I got frustrated with was, uh, again, I just mentioned how they reprinted the core rule book and then they included the errata in it, which mm-hmm. I was really happy they did. But 
one look at the storyteller screen from the storyteller's perspective will not only show you that the storyteller screen is almost an exact copy of the previous storyteller screen from Modiphius, oh. but also that they didn't bother to update the blood potency like uh like okay you can see there that all of this is your blood potency table uh -huh. that takes up a really good section of screen number two uh -huh. and it isn't updated <sighs> like they had a big you know change uh when it came to like uh the core rule book where everything got updated and whatnot and like the whole list got like a, a revamp and then like they go ahead and they release the storyteller screen so, and it just isn't updated so they just slap some new artwork on there and they, they slap some new artwork on there and they change one thing one thing regarding the actual like storyteller screen and it's not even a real significant change this is the copyright thing i mean that that is definitely one thing that they did <laughs> uh I thought you know, that was where you were going with it. I mean, it is one, like, actual... No like, because basically they took out one small panel and they replaced it with a quick reference for a clan, which mm. is okay, but it's, like, it's not significant yeah. in any way. Anyways, the reason why I bring all Battery this low. is that even with that hiccup, you know what I'm saying? Even with that oversight that they did, I'm still trying to, like, I guess you could say, justify my purchase. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. literally, this is basically uh, a carbon copy of something I already have. Mm -hmm. And I had to pay, like, 28 bucks for it. Mm -hmm. uh, can you guys think of something where you've gone ahead and bought it and then, like, you get it home, and there's, like, such this, it's, like, this crushing disappointment, and you're just, like, why the fuck did I buy that? And then you have to, like, justify it to yourself. Uh, Whatever happened to you guys? Or just me? I've definitely done it. I'm just looking at my shelf over here. Uh, I think the, the biggest one that I did recently was... Uh, I went and just like impulse. I found out that there's a D Discworld uh, RPG, and I just like, on a whim, I was like drunk one night and just like, I'm gonna buy the book for this. Even and then I realized that when it showed up, I was like, I'm probably gonna, never gonna play this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. It's GURPS, right? Do you even it know how GURPS. to play GURPS? No, I have no idea. <laughs> I just bought the thing because I love Discworld. <laughs> but I was like... What, what's GURPS? Oh, uh, GURPS is more like a universal role-playing system. So, yeah. like, for example, you can, like, adapt it to a lot of different properties. Yeah. Like, uh, it, it's very generic. I, if I'm not it's mistaken, doesn't GURPS like... roll off of uh, the fudge dice system? I don't know. <laughs> Where it's like you get, like... certain. No, that's Fate. I'm, I'm thinking about Fate. Yeah. Uh... I think GURPS has its own. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's got system. like its own sort of like thing. It does uh, work off of a D twenty system, I think. Yeah. Okay. So I'm thinking about fate off the fudge system. Uh, what about you though, David? Like, it, can you think of uh, any particular purchase you've made uh, where you, you like you get it home and you're like, "Why did I buy this?" Sometimes. <laughs> it does it does happen it hasn't happened in a while but i think that's mostly because i haven't left my house in a while yeah. i, I mean, don't go into stores out there, you know i can't make impulse buys if i can manage to stay off amazon and stay out of a store yeah. i don't i don't tend to make purchases yeah i uh um, I, don't know. I think nothing gaming related i don't think nothing gaming related yeah that, that, I think that's the big one for me recently. 
I don't know. In a way, I kind of just wanted to bitch about like the fucking yeah. storytelling. Uh, yeah, it was dude. Like, uh, like I get what you're saying. Business. I was like, I would, like, you're like, oh sweet new art, and then you open it up. It's like this is literally the exact same thing. What the fuck? Guys? I mean, it, it's like <laughs> copy paste almost yeah. down to the like fucking letter, and it's like okay. Because here, here's the thing: it wouldn't have bothered me so much. If they if, if they, they had, had like actually like done the core rule book without updating that like you know what yeah. I'm saying like if they had like just ignored that particular update and they were like okay well you know whatever it's gonna be the way it is mm-hmm. um, but like no they remembered to update yeah, that update chart the in the core book mm-hmm. and then didn't do it here yeah I mean yeah no that's just lazy someone in the design qa really dropped the ball hard on that and i don't know if it's renegade i don't know if it's like the world of darkness i don't know if it's like someone at paradox interactive like it could Could be be something from a print shop too well i can tell you now we're not gonna get any kind of renegade sponsorship brian because you decided to bitch about them here (laughs) no no, no. i've always said that their quality is really damn good in fact i defended them when uh the sabbat book came out because the sabbat book in my opinion, is really good, although it didn't quite live up to expectations from a lot of people in the vampire community because they kind of built it up in their mind as something that it wasn't. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, no, no, I, I'll defend Renegade games. The they always do pretty games. good quality, but they just drop the ball here. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it's necessarily because of Renegade games. I don't know if it's a printing error. I don't know if it's uh, a thing where like Renegade has like so much going on right now that they uh, just kind of like did an oversight because i mean they're coming out with a happen. lot of new stuff the they came out with the gi joe rpg they came out with the uh, the transformers rpg they came out with the uh power rangers rpg all of which are like really good and their quality is fantastic here's what happened i'll play gi the joe the book was the big deal and then somebody at the publishing house went decided all right intern you go do that thing and then for whatever reason they didn't check the interns work and then all of a sudden yep. you get a you get a shitty insert you and they go hey you send the thing yeah i totally sent the thing yeah that's that's exactly and they, what they happened they sent the thing wrong thing you updated the chart right yes don't yeah, check we don't that. have yeah, a warehouse. They updated, they updated that one chart things. that you said that changed, but they the one chart. Actually, you know what? I gotta fucking because I'm I'm sorry. Like it's like barely noticeable, and it's actually kind of hilarious. So like the big giant one didn't change at all, but this little tiny one that nobody cares about is the one that changed. <laughs> it's like finding grievous typing errors in a novel. <laughs> yeah, every once in a while you're like, what the. Who did that? Is that the editor? Is that, is is that the print shop? Like, I gotta say, Polish person sneeze and it got transcribed. What in the hell is that word? Purely subjective in my case, but I gotta also say that I kind of liked the original art for the storyteller screen. This one was done by Modifius. Oh. Okay. You got like the cityscape, you got like the, the burning flowers, you got uh-huh. like the kind of like prettier vampire, but then you got like the more like terrifying vampire. You got some like 30 days to like night really vibes. Kind of like, I don't know, I, I just like this artwork a mm-hmm. little better. Uh, which isn't to say that like the artwork on the no, new one from Renegade is bad by any means. It's just, you know, a, a purely subjective thing where it's like, I don't know. You be the judge. I think they're both pretty good. I think... Artwork-wise. I I need to see it again. Alright then. So, here's what they changed. They didn't change the big giant part on, like, the second panel. But, on the third panel, they took the portion next to humanity here yeah. about losing the last drop uh-huh okay which basically just says uh when a vampire loses their last point of humanity goes from uh one to zero 
Uh, they go into a spectacular frenzy. All their physical attributes increase to five for that scene, uh, which is basically like until the end of like an encounter or whatnot. Uh, if they survive this, uh, they also become a wraith, uh, and they lose. Uh, get, they get lost in the will for blood. So Ooh. it's like, yeah, okay, blood monster. Okay. So, so they changed anything. that. Okay. They put in two new charts. Two? Where did you see two? I thought, was that Dan? I don't think there is a... Oh, never mind. For some reason, I thought that, that losing the last drop was all the way off to the right of that page, but yeah. So they added Yeah, no, they uh, took out the losing the last drop, and they put in a clan quick reference so they you know basically give Useful. what the name of the clan is they give like a nickname and then they give like these are the the powers within that clan yeah useful but uh not as useful as having the most up-to-date blood potency stuff plus i gotta say i also wish they would have included all of the actual available clans instead of like just the seven you get with the core book yeah like, that would have been helpful to have, like, a full clan reference as opposed to, like, a kind of, like, half clan reference. Uh-huh. Oh, because are there... Oh, so they just included, like, the core book one, not, like, all the other additional ones that have come out since? Canonically, in Vampire, you've got 13 great clans, which basically are, like, hey, these are the 13, like, bloodlines that you're going to find most vampires come from mm -hmm. you know you've got like you know uh the 13 like big ones and then you've got like some offshoots where it's like okay well here's a minor clan or here's like uh you know someone who's like clanless you know you've got like different like rarities but the 13 are like where you're gonna find most vampires come from mm -hmm. and uh in the clan quick reference they only list seven of the 13 and yes those mm -hmm. seven are included within the core rule book which is handy to have because like i mean obviously if you're going to play vampire you're probably going to have a core rule book handy and therefore you know those are the uh seven i guess that are going to get the most exposure but at the same time it's like mm, i really wish they would have like just you know rounded out that list a little bit more Renegade, I still love yeah. your stuff. Sponsor us. <laughs> yeah, I think but uh I get what you're saying with that, but uh how do you how does one is everything else on that thing only core rule book information? Well, let's double check it here real fast here. Um on your Just first panel devil's advocate sort of scenario. Yeah. On on your first panel, you've got like how to read the dice. Uh, you've got, like, for example, uh, you know, uh, if you're using, because Vampire uses D10s, uh, and it uses only D10s. And basically, you go by fudge dice rules. So yeah. you count up your successes, and they, you know, show you what each symbol means, or if you're playing with regular dice, you know, like, you, they list what the numbers are that are successes and failures. So that's very much core stuff. Um, then they've got like a difficulty of actions. Again, very basic sort of thing where they just kind of say, oh, hey, here's some examples of like what is a routine task? What is a straightforward task? What is a moderate? Task? Uh, they've got some sample antagonists, uh, which again, very core cool rulebook stuff. Uh, they've got your experience cost. So like, you know, because Vampire has a non-linear style of, like, leveling up, they tell you exactly how much experience points you need for certain things. Like, if you want to buy a new vampiric power, or if you want to, like, upgrade a skill or whatnot, they give you the calculation. Uh, they give you a template on mortals. Um, again, very core stuff. Uh, they give uh, random... Or, I'm sorry, uh, they give you uh, critical uh, options, as well as, like, bestial failure which is like your critical fail options um 
And that's all right there, screen one. Second screen, you've got feeding, you've got generation, blood potency. All very core rule book stuff. Uh, screen three, you've got your humanity. Clan quick reference. The damaging or destroying of your touchstones, which are kind of like your last links to like humanity. Um, all very basic. You've got uh, a whole thing on frenzy, whether it's fury, hunger, or terror. Uh, you've got your different humors within the blood that you can drink, as well as like what sort of like powers run off of which humors and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got a, a chart here for like a random temp uh, uh, temperament as far as like, you know, if you wanted to roll randomly to see what this human is feeling that the vampire is drinking off of. Very core cool rulebook stuff. Range combat, crippling energy, uh, crippling injury, sorry. Uh, social damage, weapon damage, armor, hunting ground. That's all screen four, all very core cool rulebook. So yes, everything in here is absolutely very basic uh, stuff that you can find in like the core rule book. So I'll defend Which, them of course, in that instance where they just kept to what's the core rule book stuff. But yeah, I get what your yeah. take is. But isn't that kind of like the thing though? Like, I'm not trying to argue that they should have included the other clans. Uh, for one reason, like, I, I get that they're sticking to the core rulebook stuff, but at the same time, you could also make an argument that like the stuff that's in here is not just in there because it's part of the core rulebook, but also because it's the most relevant stuff. It's the stuff that you're going to be looking at yeah. more frequently for like you know, oh hey, how do I do uh, armor or how do I do like uh, experience points for a certain thing? Like you know. You're going to be looking at those all the time. Yeah, I get that. But I'd, uh, I'd say that if you if say you, uh, for this, this, someone's like, I really want to play vampire. And they went, I was like, all right, I'm going to get the core book and I'm going to get this DM screen, or sorry, storyteller screen. Uh, I'm going to be on my way. And then, uh, they're like, I don't know what uh, clans aren't in the uh, aren't in the core rule book, but I'm just say I'm just like, all right, I'm just getting used to what's on this thing. All right, cool, cool, cool. What the heck is a Wuho? Yeah, like, yeah, what, like... The f yeah what the fuck's that? That's not in my book. I read this thing cover <laughs> to cover. I'm really excited about this. Why is this not in here? I'd be like, I'd be really confused. So I. I I think it's better to include, like, if you're going to, like, have, like, this thing that comes with the thing, then you only have the stuff that's in the thing. Yeah, I, I could, again, I could see that. I mean, I'm not trying to, like, fish for reasons to bitch. I think, Brian, you need to go make your own Vampire the Masquerade DM screen with Blackjack and Hookers. I concur. I could do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> In fact, I could go to Dogmite right now and I could probably put that together, yeah. Yeah. You could go to Maybe like not. a you could go to a publisher and be like, Alright. I want this stuff, but instead of this table, I want this table. You hear that, Free League Publishing? I'm in the market. <laughs> Seriously though, Free League, just we know. Anyway. Uh <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, that that was going nowhere. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I... oh, this week in nerdcraft. Which, by the way, uh, what has kind of like gotten your guys' eyes recently? Like, for example, um, I know that Monsters of the Multiverse just came out for like D and D. Either you guys like picked that up yet? I have not. Uh, mostly because I. I thought that it didn't come out till May. The standalone, from what I understand, doesn't come out till May. But okay. if you yeah. got like the uh, the slipcase, you can get it Tasha's and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I haven't decided. Uh, the only reason I'm hesitant is I heard it's kind of like just a rehash of stuff that's like already been out in other source books. 
Oh, you think like, it's like, a, like nothing a new. Volo slash yeah. Mordekainen sort of thing? Yeah, it's not like I've heard. I I heard from what basically from what I've read that it, there's like nothing new. It's just like all kind of just like a re-release of you know, kind of like throwing everything that, together. Yeah, you know, there's no like new. Cl there's no new classes. There's no new monsters. It's just kind of like throwing everything from like Volos and Mordenkainen's all into like one thing. I mean, if someone if if I'm wrong, then I see. someone correct me. But that's what I've heard so far. I don't know if you've heard anything, Brian. Dif different, Brian. I've or? not actually heard anything. I've okay. been uh, uh, it, it it's been very hush hush. I've noticed like where well, a lot I think of people are really a lot of people about. haven't like most of the people that would have like I, that was like the weird thing about this release was like um, like. A lot of the people that like would have bought it, I feel like already have Tasha's. They've already got like Volos guide. So like, why would I buy the this other guide thing? Sep like, why would I buy this bulk pack if I've already got two of the three books? Well, because the bulk pack also comes with a brand new storyteller, uh, a brand new uh, DM screen. That's true. <laughs> you have me there. Uh. How about you, David? What's what's on your radar as far as like uh, new things coming out? Are you excited for like the new Critical Role book coming out? I am excited for Neon Dynasty. That's that's what I'm about. Hopefully, that's the uh, new uh, go get some of the more of those. Yeah, that's yeah, the, the new uh, Magic the Gathering expansion, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I think it just dropped the 18th. I haven't been able to go get any yet, so I think I'm I'm gonna go do that real soon, and I just had me thinking thinking about that um with how wizards in the coast and dungeon and dragons have been working really closely together like we've seen ravnica content strixhaven content i'm wondering if now we're gonna see like an expansion for this because this could be some really wild stuff like it's not quite as techy from what i've seen so far as like well, correct the me shadow wrong, run more universe like, uh... Yeah, it's more like, uh, I want to say kind of like Cyberpunk, but more like uh, Legend of the Five Rings meets Cyberpunk, right? Something like that. Yeah, yeah it's, like it's more not all tech. Sort of like, it's it's a lot of weird, like, magic and monsters still, like, mm -hmm. high fantasy through that, like, Japanese filter. But there are, like, uh, I saw a couple cards, there's some, like, mech suits and stuff mm -hmm. like that. They do get into some of the weird Cyberpunk tech bits as well as keeping it like true to magic's veins i don't know i'll have to see when i pick up some boosters um I'm we really might have to have you do like a thing where brain. uh maybe you can get on camera and do like an unboxing for us or something maybe oh yeah I'll check that out that'd, that'd be, be pretty cool. grab like a draft box or something like that yeah yeah uh, so it's uh there's a new there's a new uh critical role rpg come or module coming out oh yeah yeah, yeah. Um, let's see here if I can find it real fast here. Because uh, I'm sure you could probably find it real fast yourself if you look on like Amazon because it's like nah. just type in like D and D book and then like actually the last it should be like I, one of the first things you see. So the last time I googled or I Amazon something, it just so the next release being is coming in May for uh... March fifteenth, twenty twenty two. Uh, Call of mm -hmm. the Nether Deep. Oh yeah, I have heard that. See that. Okay, I'm not doing that right now. Yeah, for some reason. It co-led for Mercer. Isn't this not? Oh. Uh, this isn't like Mercer's campaign, is it? Uh, or is it? I'm not entirely certain. The description here is uh, an epic critical role campaign for the world's greatest uh, role-playing game. Uh, mm -hmm. Reed of Mortals has awakened a powerful entity long thought to be destroyed for eons. The mighty champion of the gods has been imprisoned in the darkest depths of uh, Exandria. Uh, his name has been forgotten, uh, as has his heroic mm -hmm. deeds. Languishing in despair, he calls out for new heroes to save him. Well, I guess it's uh, Mercer and James J. Hake. If 
I'm yeah. saying that right. It's a uh, heck. It, this is going to be an unpopular opinion, but uh, I'm I'm not against Critical Role. It's just not my favorite D and D podcast. I think I came a little late on the bandwagon and haven't been able to get into them so much as the uh, other pod, other like D and D podcasts that I listen to. But uh, the hard thing is always when you get behind, especially on mm-hmm. ones that have like a a really consistent schedule like critical role like releases basically every yeah the, well so they're, it's they're, like yeah. once you get behind there's no getting like caught up again. they release every week and they have like three four hour sessions like, exactly yeah, yeah and there's like hundreds of episodes at this point yeah. i think uh whereas like if you're looking for like acquisitions incorporated they're only releasing like every time they go to a convention or so if we want to talk about D podcasts uh my favorite one is uh is nad pod uh, that's uh, not another D and D podcast. Um, I think they're like the perfect sized group for people, um, and also uh, they they I like how their episodes are edited. They've got really good like uh, one of the one of the players. She does all the music for them every episode, and also. Uh, like all of their episodes are like hour and a half, two hours long. Like it's just like the perfect, like thing out of time. Time like so, it, you you don't they cut out a lot of that like the player arguing stuff, like the rules, like the rules talk and whatnot that can kind of really bog down a session and whatnot. Or like they're like, oh, but what if we did this? What if we did that? You know. Um. So it's really good. It's really well produced. Uh, it's by uh, a few people from uh, the old college humor days. Uh, Emily Axford, um, uh, Caldwell Tanner, Brian Murphy, and uh, Jake Caldwell. Nice, nice. Yeah, and I don't know. They're great. I've, I've. They're on. They just started their third their third campaign and uh it's just so good it's just like as good as it's been from the beginning so you know a lot of times you start these like D podcasts that someone tells you and you're like you start at the beginning you're like meh because you know like they start out kind of crappy maybe their production values aren't there and stuff but they like episode one we're just like there like it's just so good what about you, David? Is there any uh, like podcast or any kind of like uh, like gaming sort of thing that you're either currently or you know maybe you're uh, lacking in, but you know you're wanting to get caught up in or something like that? Like, what's your uh, what what do you got going in your ears? Hmm. Not a lot, honestly. Um, like uh, with the the gaming thing, I think it's it. I'm, I can't go vicariously through a story in that format. Like I can do more traditional forms of media, like books, movies, series, things like that, uh, or even graphic novels. But I am struggling to really get into um, listening to the podcast format, which I think is kind of weird because we're you know, directly involved in something like mm. that, which is tons <laughs> of fun doing it. But like watching us other people do that feels like me watching sports. Mm. I got you. You'd rather and be playing it, than like watching. Yeah, I would. I would much rather be playing than watching. It's like, oh, cool. Do I want to watch this guy play a video game, or do I want to play the video game? See, I'm definitely like I player like, A in that. I feel like I don't by like, the time uh, like you got into D and D, like that's when you got introduced to like. Like that's when Joel was like, "Come play this game with us." Like, like me, I spent years wanting a group to play with. So, like, my way to do that was just by listening oh, yeah. to well, D&D like podcasts. So I I've like listened like to 2011. so many of them. Yeah, is like I went for like I had a couple years where I had a play group, and then didn't have a play group for like eight or nine years. Mm-hmm. It's like 
yep nope nope nobody wants to play games with me all right cool yeah that that was my way to like age of sorrow not being able to play <laughs> or getting right. like well, one I will say this much, David. if you are if you're looking for something to kind of like listen to while you're doing chores or whatnot um i recommend the people over at uh red moon role playing uh for okay. one because they do a lot of uh different stuff than not just D. They have got an excellent uh, long-running like vampire campaign. They've got Cult Divinity Lost. They've got Call of Cthulhu. And yeah, of course, they've also got like D&D and whatnot. Like they did a, a whole thing when it came to uh, Van Richten's Guide where they, uh, you know, did like a whole uh, Ravenloft campaign and whatnot. So, I mean, like I really like them. They've got a lot of really good episodes and a lot of good uh, different series to kind of listen to. And they're a whole audio. So I mean, yeah. you don't actually have to like your time I'm, I'm open to give it a shot like i'm always looking for new content of almost all varieties and i'll i'll give them a fair shake so just throw it in our our yeah. group chat and i'll start checking them out um another great one that i listen to is uh the adventure zone they're mm-hmm. they're pretty solid as well so adventure when zone. it comes to like uh-huh. a, a bigger like you know st- production streams and whatnot mm-hmm. i've been uh Really kind of digging the Red Moon, uh, not Red Moon, uh, the uh, Black Dice Society. Have you guys been seeing that? Mm-mm. Oh, man. B. Dave Walters is a fucking amazing DM. But I've also got like uh, Matt Mercer, or not Matt Mercer, uh, sorry, Mark Muir. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's been like doing uh, not just a character that, you know, he's been playing, but he's also been doing like the Aslan thing. Where like oh. you know he's you know going around being a spooky lich and whatnot. It's fucking fantastic. Hmm. Their artwork looks dope. Yeah, I uh, pretty good. I just googled both. I just subscribed to both of those. I'll check them out later. <laughs> <laughs> check that yeah. out. I'd say other than that, like uh, I haven't really been keeping up to date on like RPG stuff. I've just most been like kind of like waiting into like here more about multiverse of madness to decide if i'm going to get that one but uh i've i've um I, we don't talk about video games a whole lot but uh destiny 2 the witch queen dropped yesterday a new expansion for that game and i it has consumed my life so <laughs> i know what you mean we uh just had the uh big expansion not expansion but like the the patch for like cyberpunk uh uh, 2077 i heard about that was that good uh you know they fixed an awful lot of things and it's uh to the point where like you know they're really like delivering on a lot of their promises i it's good i picked them up and then i i got annoyed with bugginess and stuff like that so yeah they're they're really like trying their best to make okay. good on all their promises so i, okay. I recommend like at least nice. giving them like you know a second look you know now that they've been working behind the scenes to try to make oh. everything good because uh the people who uh are behind it like really have a love for it and it kind of shines through i know it was kind of a pat i know it was kind of a passion like project over there but i need to take some time to shame the video game community for pressuring cd project red to release yeah. 2077 like a year year and a half ahead of schedule whoever well, put out that kind of hate online like so the issue was oh they, man uh, i hope you have leaky poops for a month i get i get what you're saying but i'm just like i think the <clears> problem <throat> was like the like they projected an initial release date i don't think it's the fans that are the problem is they projected an initial release date that then got pushed back a month then three months and then six months, and all uh, like in the meantime, you've got all these people that have pre-ordered, and then all of a sudden you're getting getting up to Christmas, and they're like, "Listen, all the investors are like, hey, we need a game now," and so they did the thing, see, and they released a bad product, and what should have happened was like, they should have just waited, and I mean, they would have gotten a bunch of backlash again, but if they would have, even if six months, why we don't pre-order? Been, this is why pre-order is bad. Yeah, you I mean, don't, don't pre-order it. digital. I, I gotta things. say, like, you know, I'm not a fan of corporate, you know, coming in and being all like, "You guys got to release this game now." Yeah. Like, that's mm-hmm. to me, it's like, 
you know, the fans can wait. The fans are usually speaking fairly understanding and patient about that. But it's corporate that comes down. Yeah, they're not. They're not sitting there. The fans aren't sitting there with their pitchfork. I mean, you've got the angry fans that are like, "I paid oh, money yeah. for this game." I, I feel like it's there's two sets yet. of fans too. Yeah. Like you've got the true fans that are willing to do it, and then you've got the people that have way too much access to a Twitter account. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, "What are we gonna do? We have to flame something." They've it's Tuesday great. again, so I've got to be outraged about something. Yeah, they, yep. They, have yeah. to have to just throw that hate onto the internet. It's like, no, no, don't, don't do that. Yeah, don't I do know, that. Let's support them. Be like, hey right guys, take that extra six months. Make this game give me a mind gasm when I turn it on. <laughs> That's what I want. That's what I'm paying for that sixty to what eighty dollar new game price for these days. Yeah, I mean it's up there. But I will say that the patch has fixed a lot of different things, and it's well worth, at the very least, a second look. Because yeah. I know that there are still some problems that they're still working behind the scenes to actually fix. But it's definitely getting to the point where you, you know, like, kind of turn it on, and you're like, oh, wow, so this is what I was actually promised in the first place. Yeah. I did right. see something about that on the other day, but. I, yeah. I have faith in CD Project Red. They'll get it for, right. I don't have time for anything else right now. All I know is Destiny. So <laughs> I, I, I don't know who I am. All I, I know is I must kill. I I have to defend humanity from the hive right now. So if you'll excuse me, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually looking uh, forward to that uh, Diablo Two uh, Resurrected patch, the one where they're finally going to like address some of the classes and whatnot, and like mm-hmm. kind of rebalance everything. I don't know, that's going to be interesting. Yeah. Fun. But then again, I'm kind of burned on Blizzard, so uh, yeah. yeah, you know, maybe I'll just put that on the back burner. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm revisiting a bunch deep. of old 90s anime. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. Great. Oh, if you guys are in the anime, if you haven't watched Demon Slayer yet, you're, you're sleeping at the wheel. Oh, Demon Slayer. Yeah, yeah that new season. Uh, I, I can honestly it say, like, Sorry? Don't don't spoil it. I haven't started the second season yet. That's oh no, I'm not gonna like spoil any of the plot points. I was just gonna say that, like the artwork on it continues oh, to yeah. be phenomenal. It's so mm-hmm. good. I I think it's the best anime I've seen in like years. Just like artwork, just story, just from like, an artistic voice standpoint, acting, I can like... certainly say that it is probably a heavy contender for like the best recent anime. What's wild about it too is like usually Agreed. like if you like so I've listened to like both the sub and the dub at like various points and like both of them are solid. Usually it's like, you know, obviously usually the subs like a big like clear winner, but like in this case I was like whoever like voice acted this actually like tried to sound like the <laughs> original voice actor for once. Like what the heck? <laughs> so a lot of production value into this yeah it's wild it's amazing i love that show well hey i mean we touched on a, a whole lot of uh different topics that we don't usually talk on uh and we had ourselves a good time doing it yeah um i think we're coming up on the point where we're gonna be signing off for the night yeah. i want to remind everyone that uh if you're listening to us right now you should give us a follow or you should give us a sub a like anything you can to help out the channel um, Check out and social. of course, as always, you can go to tabletoploot.com. You can get uh, 15% off of any order by just putting in NOL15 for 15% off of whatever dice you might uh, find uh, striking it's your nice. fancy there. Uh, and then uh, I think that's about it. Yeah. Uh, it's a, it was a good good week. Uh Sucks that Joel, Joel couldn't be with us this week, but uh, he's going to get better, and he'll be back with us next week for another episode of uh, our journey through. I guess it's not really Eberron anymore. We're going to have to figure out a new name. <laughs> hey, we're, we're, we're hopping. We're, we'll probably go back to like gonna, Eberron at some yeah, point. I mean, we'll, we'll go back Maybe. to home base at some point, but uh, it's we can't really call it streaming Eberron. We're in the city of doors, so we went off the rails. But a uh, little bit, a little bit. I don't know. Maybe he's got something planned. We'll have to like see what he has planned for next session. Yeah. And then of course, uh, 
We've got a lot of different like Kickstarters coming in. I can't wait to like show those guys, uh, show those off to you guys on maybe yeah. the next Talk Nerdy to us. Yeah, Ooh. I'm excited. I like that, got that uh, Dante's Inferno for fifth edition that's coming out. It's gonna be a lot of fun. All right. Ooh. Uh, thanks again, everyone, and uh, good night. Good night. Yeah. Good night, everyone.